Leon set astonishing price for Depay, Ronaldo hits 100, Kevin De Bruyne wins player of the year, a transfer roundup and today's great debate all coming up in the next few minutes as I am your host Matt Froelich, you are the one footballers and this is the Daily News. First up, and Leon have set a price tag of just 25 million euros for Memphis to buy. Now, of course, this is because the player only has one year left on his contract. They don't want to lose him on a free next summer. But surely there are going to be more teams interested in him than just Barcelona. I'm not saying many teams will be able to convince him to join the club like Barcelona can, even though they go through a bit of a rough patch. But surely this is going to alert like every team in Europe. That's well within the budget of most Premier League clubs, especially the lower ones. When you look at the likes of what Newcastle are spending, Everton as well. So surely Depay is going to end up going somewhere and he's going to have a lot of choices to make. The thing is that Ronald Koeman being the former Dutch manager and obviously having a good relationship with Memphis Depay, that could swing it in Barcelona's favour. But Manchester United are also apparently interested because, well, as we said before, it's them and the transfer. So of course they're interested. But there have been rumours that Dortmund want to take him as well as Tottenham. The thing is, if he moves to Barcelona, is he actually going to be playing in the best position? Throughout his career, we've seen him on the left wing, which looks like it's been taken by Ansu Fati, maybe one or two others, certainly Antoine Griezmann that position. He's played at centre forward, and I think that Barcelona, if Luis Suarez leaves, which looks like it's going to happen, Griezmann will probably be the centre forward. And if he's in a deeper role, well, that's kind of Messi's position. The one thing that Depay doesn't want to do is move to Barcelona and have the same thing that's happened to him as the likes of Griezmann, Coutinho, Arturo Vidal to some extent as well, when he's just played out of position and he can't really be at his most effective. I mean, last week he scored a hat-trick in Leon's first game of the new league last season and you want him to continue that kind of form in whatever position he's playing. Certainly a move to Barcelona. He and the team will be hoping does not stop that. Anyway, moving on though, and to Cristiano Ronaldo, the man who just cannot help breaking records. As soon as you write him off, he's back doing it again. Last night, he scored his 100th goal for Portugal, and then, in the second half, his 101st. He is now the first European player to score over 100 goals for his national team, and he's only eight off the record of the men's international game, which is set by Iranian forward Ali Dai over the course of 13 years. Now, of course... Ronaldo's been in the first team of Portugal for about 16 years now and he's 35 years old. But yeah, don't back against him. Eight goals to tie the record, nine goals to beat the record. There's Nations League, there's friendlies, there's Euros coming up. This is just a Cristiano Ronaldo thing to do. He's well clear of the likes of India's Sunil Chetri and Argentina's Lionel Messi, but Ronaldo, in typical Ronaldo style, just did it perfectly. There was a free kick, the 57th of his career, which flew into the top corner before a fantastic finish, saw Portugal win 2-0 over Sweden and make it two wins from two in their UEFA Nations League qualifying group. The UEFA Nations League, which they are looking to defend. But enough clamouring over that about how good Cristiano Ronaldo is. We'll move on to Kevin De Bruyne, who's not too bad himself. He yesterday picked up the PFA Player of the Year award. Now, I know those of you are going to think, Matt, I thought you hated the Ballon d'Or. I thought you hated individual awards. I do, except for the PFA one, because it's the Professional Footballers Association and it's voted for by other players. Like if you're recognised by the players you play alongside and against each week, it definitely means something. Not from a load of journalists like the Ballon d'Or is, okay, and a few coaches here and there who may have their own agendas. Anyway, Kevin De Bruyne deservedly picked it up, even though his Manchester City side finished second to a rampant Liverpool team this season. And well, he was absolutely incredible, both scoring and assisting. He's got to be the best midfielder in the world right now. But alongside this, as well as been named Player of the Year, Trent Alexander was also named Young Player of the Year, and the PFA Team of the Season was announced. And honestly, I've got quite a few bones to pick with this, so let's go through it very quickly. First off, uh, Nick Pope is in goal. Yep, had a fantastic season. Didn't win the Golden Glove, but still had a really good year in the sticks for Burnley. Next up, though, into the defence, Trent Alexander-Arnold. I think it's a bit too easy to put him in without really looking at the stats of what other right-backs can do. Yes, he's been good, and yes, he was part of the Premier League winning team, but was he the best right-back? I don't know. It's a bit up in the air for me. The same thing goes for Van Dijk in the centre of defence. Definitely wasn't as good as he was the year before. Same thing with Kagla Sionchu, who's also alongside him, was good in the first half of the season for Leicester. Not so much post-lockdown. Andy Robertson on the left-hand side again. It's easy to pick the Premier League champion in that position. Was he actually fully deserving of it? The rest of the team, yeah, I actually don't have many complaints about it. The midfield three of Henderson, De Bruyne and David Silva, obviously, three best midfielders in the Premier League this season. And up front, you've got Jamie Vardy, 
golden boot winner. Sadio Mane had a brilliant season for Liverpool. And Pierre-Emerick and Bamiyang, who was one of, well, definitely Arsenal's best player, one of the best players in the Premier League this season. Of course, you guys let me know your thoughts on the team of the year and the player of the year in the comment section below, but we'll move on to a quick roundup of the rest of the day's transfer news. First off, and Inter Milan have confirmed the signing of Alexander Kolarov from Roma. Leeds are making an ambitious attempt to sign Union Draxler from PSG. Leicester look to be winning the race to sign Bournemouth's David Brooks ahead of Manchester United. And lastly but not least, Adelaide Decore finally completed his move to Everton. So finally, we come to this week's great debate. This is where the guys from the One Football Newsroom pose a question to myself and to all of you. Of course, you can find our answers in the relevant article in the One Football app. But for the comments section, we want to know who will finish in the top four this season in the Premier League. This is a difficult one. A few weeks ago, I did make a prediction, but I've slightly altered that prediction now. And, you know, kind of given a little bit more hope to the fact that Spurs might finish in the top four. I'm not so sure what happened, but I can still have a bit of faith. Allow me to have it. Anyway, for the top four this season, I'm going to say Liverpool, Manchester City, Chelsea and Tottenham. That fourth place for Spurs is definitely up in the air. I'm just going to be a bit optimistic because which football fan isn't? Anyway, you guys let me know your thoughts on the great debate, your predictions for the top four. And in fact, we will have a predictions video coming out this weekend as well for the whole of the Premier League season. Anyway, you guys let me know your thoughts on the rest of the day's daily news as well. Smash the like button and click here or here to check out all of the other videos we've got going on on OneFootball. But until next time, I'll see you guys later.